selecting a home base for your LifePort kidney transporters and associated disposable supplies. When selecting a home base for your LifePort kidney transporter and supplies, there's several things to give consideration to. First and foremost is the ability to keep the LifePort kidney transporters plugged into the wall to ensure a full battery charge in preparation for your next perfusion case. Also allow for enough space for all your disposable products and give consideration to packing a perfusion bag, if you will, that has a sampling of multiple different cannulas, sterile drapes, as well as the perfusion circuit. Cooling down the LifePort kidney transporter. To begin, you'll want to remove the lid from your LifePort kidney transporter. Then, remove the ice container from the LifePort. Open the ice container lid and fill the container with crushed or cubed ice. Hollow cubes are not recommended for this purpose. You want to make sure that you push the ice as far back as possible into the ice container, maximizing the amount of ice added. Once you have added as much ice as possible, pour about one liter of cold water over the ice. This will gradually loosen the ice and allow room for more ice to be added to the container. Add more ice to the ice container, then add water, ensuring that the water line is at or above the ridge on the ice container. You want to maximize the amount of ice added to the ice water mixture in order to optimize the amount of time the life port can maintain a temperature between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. Close and lock the ice container lid then return the ice container to the life port and it is ready for use. Loading the life port kidney transporter perfusion circuit. Remove the sterile perfusion circuit from its protective outer dust cover. Place the circuit either on a mayo stand or a back table wherever it's convenient to open in a sterile fashion. A person who is part of the scrubbed in team will then remove the perfusion circuit, remove the paper tape securing the inner and outer lids to the perfusion circuit. Remove the inner organ cradle. At this time, perform an inspection of the perfusion circuit. Ensure nothing is cracked, broken, etc. A non sterile person will then prepare the LifePort kidney transporter to receive the perfusion circuit by opening the spring latch arm, tubing raceway, and locking arm. The sterile person on the field will then place the perfusion circuit on the edge of the table in preparation to receive one liter of KPS 1 preservation solution. Inner and outer lids are then replaced on the LifePort kidney transporter perfusion circuit. The circuit is then handed off of the sterile field to a non-sterile person for finalization of setup. Perfusion circuit is placed into the LifePort kidney transporter ice container. At a 90 degree angle, insert the tube frame into the U-clamps. The beige tubing is then placed over the pump head the raceway is closed and the spring latch arm is locked. Apply slight pressure between the bubble detectors and close the locking arm. The pressure sensor cable is then installed. At this time, the unit can be powered on and it will go through a series of self checks. Place the unit in wash mode to start the fluid flow into the perfusion circuit. Once the bubble trap is filled with solution and solution starts to come from the wash port back into the reservoir, using a slow 45 degree rotation, rotate the life port unit to expel any ancillary air that may be in the micron filter. Upon completion, replace the outer insulated cover on the LifePort unit to help with ice longevity. Entering organ ID information on the LifePort kidney transporter. First start by accessing the control panel on the top of the LifePort kidney transporter. On the right hand side, you're going to find the five-way keypad. 
pressing OK will populate a menu. Once it's populated, you should select Organ Information and click OK. Enter your UNOS number. Once completed, press Done. The unit will ask you if you'd like to save or to cancel. This is your opportunity to confirm your work. Do this for each of the items listed. Kidney, you'll have the options of left kidney, right kidney, or NA. As for blood type, there will be no subtypes. You will have A, B, O, A, B as options. Once completed, press Done. Cannulation of the kidney using the universal seal ring cannula when there is a patch present. The universal seal ring cannula comes in four sizes. 3mm, 5mm, 7mm, and 9mm. Giving consideration to choosing the size of your cannula, the most important item is to match the size of the cannula with the lumen of the renal artery. Once cannula selection has been completed, open the cannula completely to include the clear plastic base. There's a small clip which will allow you to open this base. Position the base of the renal artery within the jaws of this clip. Prior to closing the clip, ensure that you are not pinching the renal artery or providing any occlusions. Adjust the residual aortic patch so that it lies flat on the bottom portion of the cannula. Hinge the top portion of the cannula closed, ensuring that the soft black rubber portion of the cannula inserts into the lumen of the renal artery. Hold slight pressure on the cannula at this point while using the tensioning straps on the sides of the cannula to close the cannula. This will complete your cannulation. Cannulating the kidney using a universal seal ring cannula without a patch. There are a couple of options for cannulas when there is no patch present. The least traumatic of these options is the universal seal ring. First, ensure that you select the appropriate size cannula for your vessel. Then, open the cannula by unhooking the straps, then unsnapping and opening the anvil. Position the vessel in the center of the anvil so that the terminal end of the vessel is 1.5 to 2 millimeters above the surface of the anvils. Close the anvil around the vessel. Position the vessel and then close the upper portion of the cannula carefully bringing the conical seal into the interior of the vessel. Wrap each strap around the anvils and secure them on the posts. Look through the sight glass to ensure that there are no occlusions. Cannulating the kidney with a seal ring cannula. Seal ring cannulas come in two sizes, the 7 by 20 millimeter and the 10 by 35 millimeter. Both of these cannulas can be used when there's sufficient aortic patch available to create a seal. 7 by 20 cannula can be used in the situation of multiple arteries that are close together to incorporate both of them into a single cannulation. The 10 by 35 can be used in the same manner with arteries that are spread a little bit further apart. Start by opening our cannula and placing the rigid portion or bottom rigid portion of the cannula over our aortic patch. Using a pair of non-traumatic forceps such as Debecky's, we're going to reach to the center of the rigid plastic portion and gently pull our patch into position on top of the cannula. Once the patch is laid flat, we can then close the top portion of our cannula onto the patch to create our seal. At this point, we want to continue to apply pressure while we tighten the outer rubber tensioning straps, which will form our seal. At this point, our cannulation is complete. Cannulating the kidney with a straight cannula. Straight cannulas come in three sizes, three, five, and eight millimeter. If you find yourself in a situation where straight cannulation is the only option, we encourage you to reach out to your surgeon for approval prior to using the straight cannula as intimal damage can occur. Start by choosing the most appropriate straight cannula based on the size of your arterial lumen. Place a large silk tie, either a one or an O, or even an umbilical tape will work fine around the base of the artery in preparation for tying the cannula in place. Insert the straight cannula into the lumen of the artery. Try not to insert it too deeply. We really only need to place it in just enough to where we can tie around the suture pump. Once the cannula is in position, 
tie your suture down around the cannula, and your cannulation is complete. Cannulating the kidney, connecting multiple cannulas with a coupler. In some cases, you may have a kidney that has multiple vessels that need to be cannulated separately. In order to perfuse these cases, you can use a coupler. After each vessel has been cannulated, identify the main vessel and snap that cannula into the cannula mount. Attach the infused line to this cannula, then replace the end cap with one end of the coupler. Attach the other end of the coupler to the infused port of the next cannula. This can be repeated for as many couplers as necessary. Placing the kidney in the kidney cradle. Start by preparing your kidney cradle to receive your kidney by moving the protective netting out of the way. Gently place your kidney into the kidney cradle with the vein side upward so we can visualize a fluent leaving the vein after infusion starts. Adjust your kidney cradle to the appropriate height to avoid stretching the renal artery once the cannula is snapped into position. Secure your safety netting. Don't place this netting on too tightly. The kidney is going to swell a little bit during hypothermic machine preservation, and we want to give it a little bit of space to do so. Placing the kidney in the Lifeport Kidney Transporter. Now that your kidney is in the kidney cradle, you are ready to place it in the Lifeport Kidney Transporter. First, have someone outside of the aseptic field open the sterile drape and remove the outer lid from the perfusion circuit. Then, position the folded sterile drape over the perfusion circuit. Unfold the sterile drape along the length of the life port. Then unfold the drape side to side. Position the drape opening around the covered perfusion circuit and remove the inner lid. You can then place the kidney cradle in the perfusion circuit. Priming the infuse line. You will first need to press stop to stop the wash mode. Then, connect the infuse line to the open end of the cannula and tighten the lure lock fitting. With the end cap removed from the opposite end of the cannula, press the prime mode. Clear the bubbles from the infuse line and the cannula and replace the end cap. This should cause the pop to stop and beep. Initiating perfusion. Before infusing the kidney, you can change the pumping pressure using the up and down arrows, although the default is 30 millimeters of mercury. Then, press the infuse button to start the infusion process. Visually check for leaks around the cannula, ensuring that the artery expands after infusion. You can also check that the perfusate or any residual blood is exiting through the vein. As the perfusion continues, you will be able to see the color of the kidney change to a more pale state. Closing the Lifeport Kidney Transporter. At this time, the sterile person can then place the inner sterile lid back onto the Lifeport unit, remove the drape. The non-sterile person will then secure the outer lid to the perfusion circuit and then place the outer lid of the Lifeport kidney transporter on and using the two silver handles on the ends, lock this unit down. It's important to keep the outer lid on at this point. This will preserve the longevity of our ice. Checking parameters after infusion is commenced. The display screen of the Lifeport kidney transporter will provide comprehensive information as to what's going on with the kidney. On the left hand side you can find the set pressure of the unit as well as the pressure that the machine is achieving during perfusion. You'll also find your current flow rate, renal resistance, as well as two temperatures. The first temperature is that of the ice and water surrounding the kidney for preservation purposes. The second temperature is an approximation of the temperature of the solution flowing directly into the kidney. So what we're looking for over the first approximate hour of perfusion is we want to see our flow increase and our renal resistance decrease. If this isn't happening, consideration might be given to the need for adjustment of pressure depending on the quality of the kidney. 
Also on the left hand side you can find a toggle button which when pushed will display trend lines of flow and resistance over time. Removing the kidney from the life port. When you're ready to remove the kidney from the life port, have someone outside the aseptic field remove the life port cover and open the sterile drape. Also, have them remove the outer lid of the perfusion circuit. Place the folded sterile drape over the perfusion circuit and open it first along the length of the life port and then side to side. Remove the inner lid from the perfusion circuit and press stop to stop the infusion. Detach the infuse line from the cannula and then remove the kidney cradle. This can then be taken to a back table. Here, open the mesh organ restraint, remove the cannula from the cannula mount, and then remove the cannula from the vessel. The kidney is then ready to be removed from the kidney cradle. Cleaning up after a case. Once the kidney has been removed, power off the life port. Replace the inner lid on the perfusion circuit. Then remove the sterile drape and dispose of it accordingly. Replace the outer lid on the perfusion circuit and remove the perfusion circuit from the life port by disconnecting the pressure sensor, turning the latch, and opening the pump head. Dispose of the perfusion circuit accordingly. Remove and empty the ice container and clean the life port with a 70% isopropanol solution. Replace the ice container and ice container lid. As well as the life port cover 